Um, but thank you very much for asking me along to talk today. I'm the Lead Officer for the Violence Against Women Partnership in Dundee. Um, and my task was to talk about some of the work that we've done in Dundee within the protecting people context to move to a more collaborative working across different policy areas and services in relation to violence against women. So I've really struggled to try and keep this short because so much of the work has, has been carried out over a number of years um, and there's been so many factors that have influenced progress. But I'll give it my best shot and I'll be as quick as I can so we can get to the break. So this is just a really quick snapshot of the historical position in Dundee and the, the current position too. Um, I'm sure it's either all of it or some of it will be very familiar to lots of different areas. Um, but we have very high rates of domestic abuse and sexual crime and lots of other complexities around substance use and deprivation, significant capacity and demand issues for specialist services, and over-reliance on third sector specialist agencies and lack of capacity to upskill in other areas and real challenges meeting the needs of women with multiple and complex issues. Um, and the reason I wanted to put that in was just to kind of set the scene for the direction that we've taken and why the need to work collaboratively was so important. It's a complex picture that needs a multifaceted response. And the next slide please, Joe. <coughs> So it's always a, a real honour to be asked to speak at events like this and highlight some of the positive things that we're doing in Dundee. But when reflecting on what has enabled us to make progress, I have to go right back way before I was in post and recognise that there were some really key individuals and we were really lucky to have them who laid the foundations for what we're achieving now. And the approach that they took was to make the harm really vis visible um, and the risk really visible to all the sort of people who needed to be aware of that. They focused on proving value. So there was lots of work done around evaluating new services and new, new approaches. And the persistence and goodwill was probably the most important thing of lots of different people, but particularly the operational staff who got the work done. And lastly, the structure I think is important to, to talk about in terms of Dundee. So one of the key factors is that the Violence Against Women partnership and work has been located within the protecting people's structure in Dundee. And there's real strong commitment and support for this that's been there for a number of years. So that means that the VAW partnership reports directly to our chief officers group and has equal footing and direct links with the other protecting people partnerships such as the child protection and adult protection committees. And also the strategic support team for these partnerships and committees is located together as one team. And this has huge benefits for communication, cross-cutting approach and the sharing of development and ideas. Can I have the next slide, Joe? So one of the plan pieces of work that, that's helped us was back in 2018-19, pre-COVID, um, with the Violence Against Women Partnership undertook a review of Pathways for Women within Dundee. And that gave us a really clear vision of where we wanted to go. And through the process of that review, we identified that addressing the ability of non-specialist services, so not the Violence Against Women services, to respond to Violence Against Women was our priority. We wanted to reduce the reliance on those specialist services and provide a consistent and improved response across all services in the city, so wherever women might make contact. We took our focus away from just trying to stick plasters on the gaps in specialist services, although we always continue to try and strengthen their capacity and funding arrangements, and focused instead on all services and how they could better share the load. Next slide, please, Joe. And at the end of 2019, the Dundee Drugs Commission, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, was published. And the commission actually gave a really clear message and recommendation about the importance of gendered approaches, which gave us a real springboard. Also at this time, research was commissioned to look at the needs of women in Dundee and clear recommendations were made around services and responses to women and changes that need. Next slide, Joe. Hmm. I'm aware that I'm whizzing. Um, so at this point in, in 2019, we had the Violence Gets Women Partnership Pathway Review, identifying the need to upskill and build capacity in universal, mainstream and non-specialist services, and the Commission and the research also making the same recommendations. So this all came together in the creation of the Gender Services Group, which reports directly to the Violence Gets Women Partnership and the ADP. And that was partly planned, but partly seizing on the opportunity that the Drug Commission recommendation gave us. And the collective leadership that now flows from the Violence Against Women Partnership and the ADP expanded our ability to tackle the issues faced by the most vulnerable women in our city and opened up huge possibilities for collaborative working at strategic and operational level. Next slide, please, Joe. 
One of the most important developments that's come from the Gendered Services Group is that we secured funding to um, employ somebody to run the Gendered Services Project. And this project aims to support non-specialist services to become more gendered in their design, delivery and ethos. So the key focus of the project is about engaging women with lived experience to ensure we are getting it right and they are able to influence service design and delivery. <coughs> so far, we've delivered training to over 150 members of staff in Dundee across the multi-agency workforce. Excuse me a second. The project has developed a self-assessment tool to identify gaps in good practice and services are supported to complete this tool and then develop and implement an action plan. <laughs> Excuse me. Next slide, please. So, like I said, the important bit is the involvement of women with lived experience. And throughout the whole project cycle, we make sure that they are involved. They've been involved in a number of different developments so far, and um, some of those include that development of that self-assessment tool. They've also developed an animation, which we use in training, and a short film highlighting the importance of trust, relationships, empowerment, safe spaces, and a holistic approach. And we're going to show that at the end of my presentation. And ultimately, we want to be able to provide certification for services who make improvements in the way that they work in terms of a gendered approach. And we've involved women with lived experience to design a logo, a charter mark, that we're hoping services will be able to display on their websites or within their buildings. Next slide, please, Cho. Please excuse my voice, it's just suddenly gone, I don't know why. <laughs> so another key factor which I um, wanted to talk about a little bit more is the protecting people approach that we've taken in Dundee. Um, and across all of our committees and partnerships, we have become committed to developing approaches that improve support to the people involved, who have often got multiple complex and changing needs, which typically arise from experiences of trauma, instead of individually and separately addressing different themes or topics. To highlight the interconnected nature of this approach, um, we've developed this um, diagram that you can see on screen, and I don't have time to kind of talk into that in more detail but happy to do it if anybody's interested at another time. So the pandemic also impacted on this approach. And whilst there were huge concerns about the impact of the pandemic in relation to violence against women, there were also opportunities in terms of collective leadership. In Dundee, the development of an in integrated protecting people risk register was very quickly mobilised as lockdown began. And what this enabled us to do was to understand the shared risks across the protecting people committees and work collectively in our responses to these risks. COVID brought the risks around violence against women and particularly domestic abuse to the fore, and this was reflected in the risk register. This has really assisted us in how we approach violence against women and particularly the funding related to it. In light of some of the challenges around funding, the Violence Against Women Partnership took a paper to the Chief Officers Group in late 2020, clearly linking to the risk register, and that resulted in some real commitments to reallocating capacity within mainstream services and a commitment to upskilling mainstream services to effectively tackle violence against women. A chief officers group funding group was established in terms of violence against women. And through that focus um, and the risk register, we were able to secure some of the COVID recovery funding and channel that to Dundee Women's Aid and RASAC so that they could address the very scary waiting times that they were experiencing in their services. Next slide, please, Joe. I'm nearly there. So where are we now? Through all these elements, so the whistle stop tour there, the strong foundations, some of the external springboards like the Drugs Commission, the Gender Services approach, the Protecting People approach, the Chief Officer's commitment and the Risk Register. I think we're finding ourselves in a, a reasonable position in Dundee. Some of our work has been planned, some has been organic and some of it's been our ability to adapt to unexpected and work collaboratively to find solutions. We've really worked hard as well to increase the effectiveness of the Violence Against Women Partnership and raise its influence to sit alongside the other protecting people committees. And some of the key highlights, just really quickly to illustrate where I think we've we've done quite well in terms of collaborative or collective leadership are um, so the funding I've already mentioned, but as well as that COVID um, recovery funding we were able to secure. We've also now got partnerships um, through the latest round of DES funding between the Council and Violence Against Women Specialist Agencies. We've got funding commitment from the ADP and Children and Families Social Work. We've filled some really big gaps that we had in service in Dundee, so we now have Dundee Assist, CEDAR and uh, various others. 
and we've seen some mainstreaming of uh, some of our services through the Health and Social Care Partnership as well. There are really strong partnerships um, between the main uh, violence against women specialist agencies in Dundee and they're actually working together to realign their services to make sure that pathways are as streamlined as possible. But there's also strong partnerships out with um, the specialist agencies as well. We're seeing widening ownership and commitment across the board to violence against women. So examples being the collaborative approach that's being taken at the moment in the development of a women's hub in Dundee. So we've got a huge range of different partners involved in that. And I'm seeing ownership and leadership from education, housing, CLD, health and social care partnership and many others um, kind of really obviously starting to happen now. And there's also visibility, I think, around violence against women and the violence against women partnership starting to happen too. So our 16 days campaign last year and this year have been, you know, supported by a massive range of of partners who wouldn't maybe have been involved before. And I think the big indicator for me at strategic level is that I no longer need to be the one who raises violence against women or gender when I'm sitting in meetings. Other people are starting to do that and it's just absolute music to my ears. But before I finish, I just wanted to say that at the last um, Violence Against Women Partnership meeting last week, I asked the members what they felt were the key things I should highlight today in this presentation. And the points they made were about <clears throat> how we've created a safe space around violence against women work in Dundee, where egos are not at play, and it enables us to have transparency in our approach, particularly to funding. It enables collaboration and creativity and allows us to hold each other accountable. And there's a quote there from the manager of the Women's Rape and Sexual Abuse Centre in Dundee, and I'll just draw your attention to the last line. So getting rid of those egos and fear about things, it's no longer my service, my service, it's Dundee services. And then up in that orange circle, we've got a quote from the manager of Dundee Women's Aid. It's not about being as competitive with each other. It's a true partnership.